The Job Seeker Welfare Trap. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Still with my warm stein of coffee because it's fantastically cold here in Brisbane today. It's good, good for the circulation. I thought we'd have a look at this article written by Jason Murphy because it's a very good demonstration of the welfare trap that's occurring with Job Seeker. Now, people are acting in their own best interests, but the problem is, sometimes it's better to not work than it is to work. And that causes a big problem, a big problem for other parts of our economy, and frankly, for the people losing their connection to employers and losing the value that is gained and the sense of identity and purpose that is gained from work. I think it's a very important thing. It's particularly important, I'd say, even to men with regards to their identity. That's why if you have mates that are potentially losing a job now or in trouble during this time, reach out to them, guys. You know, even if you can remotely, just get in touch, see how they're going. Because sometimes, you know, it's going to be tough on people. And we're going to see that happening in this pandemic. Sometimes just a word, a chat, a beer can make a difference. Because we've all been through tough times. You know, and this is going to be... A, frankly, a recession, if not worse, for a period, we can get out of it. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at this, the job seeker and the income cliff. The government's plan to help Australians without work and the pandemic has a big loophole that means you can get more cash for doing less, more money for doing less. And while we're seeing this as well, particularly in the US where workers just aren't going back to work because they're earning more on welfare because they're getting more with the welfare and the top up. And there's less, well, less risk and less effort. Some, one thing as well, I was talking to, to a gentleman who was, he's talking to people, a lot of people are telling him they're just not happy with their lives. It's the first time, the first time they've stepped away, they've gotten off the treadmill that they're constantly going on. I've got to do this, got to pay the school fees, got to do this, got to work, 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 work. It's the first time they've had a chance to reflect and realize I'm not happy with this. Oh, look, I get to spend time with my kids. What's going on? Yeah. Some people were saying similar to a midlife crisis, a period of reflection. You know, maybe now's the time to look at new opportunities to change the path that you're taking in your life. Everything can have a silver lining. So, we need to talk about JobSeeker. The government added a $550 supplement payment on top of the regular unemployment benefit, and it is going to create a nightmare scenario if we do not change it. It creates dangerous incentives in the welfare system because its design leaves recipients faces, facing, facing, facing a huge income cliff. And if you're getting this bonus, guys... Don't even treat it as part of your regular income. Completely stash it away, save it. Use it just to decimate debt. Don't even live off of it if you can. Because it'll it, it could disappear overnight. And that's the problem. You don't want to get dependent on it. You don't want people to start taking on debt and trying and servicing it with this. Additional debt. You can see that happening, can't you? The first clip. Normally if a person is on the dole, currently known as job seeker, formerly known as new start, they keep rebranding it, don't they? They can legitimately earn a few dollars without losing the payment completely. As they make more from work, the government payment is progressively reduced as the next graph shows. For example, if you do no work at all, you get paid $566 a fortnight. That's not very much, is it? If you earn $500 a fortnight in the private sector, you can still get $343 sorry, from Centrelink for a total of $843. And if you earn 1200 you get zero from Centrelink. So here's the graph. Here's the graph. So your private income grows. And this is kind of the, the, the point where you don't get any more. Where you don't get any more. Which is fine. This is meant to be an incentive to work. But you need to earn enough money to make it worth it. This is a good system. Otherwise, unemployed people wouldn't be willing to take on a small part-time job because they'd lose their whole income. It encourages people who are looking for work to take a few hours work if it's available. Well, yes, you want people to build up those skills. You want people to build up those skills. That's what you need. You want people who 
uh, how, showing an incentive and a desire to work, who have a work ethic. This is the problem with multi-generational welfare dependence. You, there's no role modeling. There's no, the children have no one to role model off if the parents have just been stuck on, on welfare. And it goes from one generation to the next. That, that's, the, that's the worst thing about having these systems of support where it can damage one generation to the next. So fading out of welfare payments is a good policy, but the new $550 job seeker supplement doesn't have a fade out. As the next graph shows, you get the $550 a fortnight if you're receiving job seeker no matter what, whether you're working zero hours or grinding away for most of the week to make $1,000 a fortnight. So here you have it, and he's showing here on the graph. So let's project this guy over here ups so all of this area here so down here and here for this period from say 12 to about 1500 you're actually not making any more money <laughs> so you're working you're working harder and you're making less money and that's what the cliff is it's this period here so there's no incentive for you when you hit this sweet spot right here that's your maximum income you know, say we'll call that 1600 bucks. You're not going to make any more money. So there's no incentive for people to work there. And that's the problem. That's the problem. And that's, that's the trap. That's the cap right there. Because why are you going to work when you earn less money? It's not that you actually make more. It's not that you make more, you make less. If you go from earning 1000 a fortnight to earning 1100 you suddenly lose the whole $550 payment. Your income crumbles. This situation, as it stands, means many people are better off working fewer hours or turning down a promotion. That's crazy. Wait, so it's even worse than I expected. It just completely disappears. I thought it would lock in place. Okay, so no, no, sorry, I'm wrong there. This is even stupider than I thought. It just disappears. Why is that tied? I guess he yeah, it's tied to Job Seeker. So if you don't get Job Seeker anymore, you don't get the supplement. So... This is almost getting to the point where it needs to be a UBI. This is so messy. This is showing us how messy this entire system is, how this rollout has been. Guys, this process has not been well planned. It has not been thought out. It is just a ludicrously fast, unorganized response. The governments are panicking. They're panicking. You know, I honestly think that what we're seeing here on is uh, the outcome of a global mass hysteria. That's what I, I, I think we're seeing here. Look at these. Look how badly thought out this is. So it just completely disappears. It's not even at this cap. You don't even keep getting it. So yeah, that, is, that window is where you'll earn less. Wow. The welfare system is not meant to discourage people from working. <laughs> yes, it's not meant to, but it is. In fact, under the Job Seeker Supplement, you're slightly better off earning $0 a fortnight from a job than earning 1100 a fortnight. That's bad design. It's accept acceptable only in an emergency, and yes, the pandemic is an emergency. But later in the year, as we begin our long march back to normalcy, we need to fix it. We need to get rid of the cliff, but we don't need to get rid of the new generous approach. One popular solution will be simply to get rid of the 550 job seeker supplement and go back to the old system of paying people just 550 a fortnight. However, attractive that simple idea is, we should be very careful of it. Not only is the old job seeker too low to live on, but by going back to it, we could harm the economy. The sudden withdrawal of max mass government spending will leave an enormous hole in economic activity and the income of businesses and households says the Grand Institute and Economic Think Tank. That's the second cliff. Well, that's, I mean, that's the idea, the argument the Keynesians are putting forward, just more government spending, spending, spending. Cliff two, Australian income and spending will collapse if the government simply terminates the job seeker payment and the job keeper payment at the end of September as planned. These emergency measures have been successful at supporting the incomes of many households and businesses. Each and every one will be gone by the end of October, making October, October a very dangerous time for businesses and for the economy, said the Institute. Well, also, I, th I think we're going to see more of uh, more concern is just the crashing consumer confidence. 
How many people are pulling back their spending habits? Australia's economy is being held together at the moment by the huge range of new government payments. The payments can't last forever, but we can't expect to push the Australian economy off a cliff and see it fly either. We need to phase out the payments gradually. One suggestion for the job seeker supplement is to reuse, reduce it down from 550 to 370 a fortnight. The idea comes from the Australian National University professor Peter Whiteford, and he argues it would be a great chance to simplify the whole welfare system. You see, the age pension and disability pension are currently set at 370 a fortnight higher than job seeker. Lifting job seeker by 370 a fortnight would make job seeker the same as the pension and reduce the incentive of people to try to qualify for a pension instead of job seeker. This is just one idea, and it's a neat one because it solves another problem at the same time. But whether we do this or something else, one thing is clear, something needs to be done. So there you go, guys, an interesting, well, an interesting welfare trap built into the job seeker supplement. And I mean, this just shows you the mess of this entire system and all the unintended consequences of it. It feels incredibly rushed. All of it feels incredibly rushed. Almost like they're just frantically trying to scramble whatever they can. Surely there could have been better ways to manage this pandemic or the risk posed by this pandemic rather than just shutting everything down so quick so harsh putting so many businesses out of place but we'll have to wait and see guys we'll have to wait and see as always please let me know your thoughts and opinions on the comments below are you receiving the job seek or job job seeker supplement what are you doing with it are you putting it aside are you using it to get rid of debts you, is it helping you upskill to try and find a new job have you been let off during this pandemic are you deciding to pivot into something else as always, please let me know your thoughts and opinions. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and you'd like to support us, there are a few ways you can. You could join the channel here on YouTube. You can support us via our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay. You can use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says or support us via PayPal. Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next video.